Lian Li makes some of the most amazing fans out there. Take their Uni SL Infinity 120s as an example. They do not look like they are performance monsters, however, as it turns out, they truly are and they topped out our benchmark list. Now, now Lian Li is in the process of releasing the V2 of their complete lineup. Their Uni SL 120s already got the refresh, but today, today it's time for their brand new Uni AL 120 V2 RGB, claiming a 10% airflow and 8% static pressure uplift compared to V1. They are meant to top out benchmark charts again. By spec, the fluid dynamic bearing is supposed to let them spin at up to 2000 RPM, whilst pushing up to 77.3 CFM at 2.97 mm of H2O, and whilst yelling at up to 28.7 dB. But before we dive deeper into this fan, let's have a look at the benchmarks. In our inflated case benchmark, the new AL120 V2s managed to keep the temperature at 4 45.9 degrees C above ambient. This positions it slightly above the SL120 V2s and about in the middle of all the fans we have tested so far. Now, when we finished the benchmarks, we were quite shocked about this result. It's not, it's really not a bad result, not at all. They beat the noise blocker E loops, for example, even the Alpha Cool Core at 500 RPM more, and they are way in front of the Arctic P12s. And even compared to the Uni SL120, V2s, it does make sense on paper. The new ALs are a bit better in basically everything, and therefore it's just normal that there are a bit in front of them. No, the problem is because of their Uni SL Infinity 120 V1. And even if the difference between the two fans in our benchmark is inflated by roughly 3x, it would still mean that in a real world scenario, our set of Infinity SLs would perform roughly 1 to 2 degrees C lower than the AL V2s. And that, while they are supposed to push less air at lower pressure whilst being louder. It just didn't make any sense, so I repeated the benchmarks for every Lee and Lee fan we have, plus uh, Nokia NF A12X25, but, but no, all the results were consistent, plus minus 0 0.1, 0 0.2 degrees C, which is definitely margin of error, but no, our results were accurate. But then I had a different idea, because back then when I released the SL120 Infinity review, there were quite a lot of comments informing me about a huge inconsistency issue in the performance of Lee and Lee fans in general. Yeah, golden sample and really not uh, a golden sample. And this is also what happened here. Upon measuring the actual fan speed of each fan, using an external like laser RPM measuring device, it turned out that the difference between my SL120s, Infinities, and AL120 V2s is a lot bigger than it should have been. By spec, the SL120s, the Infinities, were supposed to be spinning at 2100 RPM and the new AL120 V2s at 2000, making a total difference of 100 RPM. Okay, a bit of optimization, thinner borders, longer blades, and V2 is better. But but as it turns out, my SR120 Infinities are spinning about 50 RPM too fast and my new AL V2s are spinning about 50 RPM too slow, making the difference between the two twice as big as it should have been. Or in other words, putting a leash on the new one and feeding the old one with crack cocaine. And voila, 1 to 2 degrees C real life or 5.8 in our inflated benchmark. Sucks for them because it doesn't look amazing in the graph, but uh, that's just the reality of the exact samples that I got. But on the bright side, if we ignore or Lee and Lee's drug-induced SL Infinity fans, the AL120 V2s did not land in a bad position here. Slightly on the upper half is still quite good. But let's go over the noise to performance benchmark, because if there is one thing that they did right in the past, it was being quiet. By lowering the fan speed over time, we are able to create a noise to performance graph from 25% of each fan's max speed up until full blast. And here we can see another few quite interesting things. First off would be something that goes directly against what the spec sheet is saying. For our dB meter, the AL Infinities were in fact a tiny bit louder than the SLV2s. 
although Lee and Lee is saying otherwise. From there, the AL120 V2s kept being slightly behind the SL120 V2s until the very end. Compared to other fans, they still got an amazing noise to performance ratio. Compared to, for example, Fantex T30 in 2000 RPM mode, they started up as slightly behind them, but then kept going on for a bit longer whilst the T30 already hit thermal throttle. And compared to entry level fans, they are on the clearly dominating side compared for example to an Arctic P12, the yeah, they just won, and Alpha Cool's Core 120 at 2500 RPM did not even play the same game. So overall, they, they have an amazing noise to performance ratio, pretty much equal to a Fantex T30, but with a bit more bang on the lower end. However, still quite far away from the cocaine-driven Infinity SR120s, and yeah, that's, that's just how it is, but here is how they sound. Now, because these new AL120s have quite a lot more static pressure than any other Lee and Lee fan, I really wanted to see how they would perform on a radiator-specific benchmark. Thankfully, I was already filming another video where I needed to slap a handful of fans on top of a Liquid Freezer 240, and I also slapped every Lee and Lee fan on there, so uh, there we go. Whilst pushing a total of 200 watts total package power through a 13700K, we got the following which is very surprising. Although the new ALV2s did not top the K-specific benchmark, they clearly dominated the radiator space. At 62.2 degrees C above ambient, they were only beaten by the much quicker Arctic P12 Max. But SR120 V2s, SR Infinities, every Lee and Lee lost with quite the gap, and even the Nokia NFA 12X25 did not stand a chance. It just lost. Lowering the fan speed allowed us to create another noise to performance graph, this time specifically for radiators. Here we saw something that I certainly did not expect. Lee and Lee's new AL120 V2s just won. And they won by a lot. They even beat the crap out of our golden infinity sample and not even Arctic's P12 Max was capable to keep up, except when you start pushing the speed beyond 2500 rpm, but that, that was kind of expected. So very interesting so far, although the new AL120 V2s did not dominate the case fan category, they clearly dominate in the radiator space and actually by a lot. Which is a very good result, surprising given how the other benchmark turned out, but uh, hey, Lee and Lee never said that these were case fans, and apparently they are radiator fans. But now let's get to the fan itself. The package we got is an AL120 V2 triple pack, and given how every other Lee and Lee fan was lined up before, I'm pretty confident that there will also be like a single package very soon. But the one we got comes with three fans, Lee and Lee's AL120 V2 specific L3 controller, a manual, and a whole bunch of installation material for both installing and connecting everything. As far as the controller is concerned, it's pretty much much the same thing we have seen on the SL120 Infinities. Connect the controller to SATA, give it an ARGB and PVM signal and connect the micro USB to internal USB 2.0 header and you are done. However, for fan connection, we already have the first difference between Lee and Lee's V1 and V2 liner. Inside the box, you will get four of those 50 cm long cables. On one side, we got the same connector that goes into the controller, just as we did before, but on the other side, we now have this thing. On the fan side, we will now find this connection, and the bottom part looks pretty similar to the older Infinity set, but the part above that is new. And this is where that cable is supposed to go in. Just turn it the right way and press it in. And it even hides the mail connection side completely. Now this is a slightly different approach to what we had before, like with the infinities. Before we had those thick connections no matter what, and now we have the thinner ones, which thanks to the cable being very, very flat and easily bendable, it does make everything very easy to hide. But I wouldn't necessarily call it better, it's just 
different. From there, we can do what every other Li and Li uni fan was capable of doing before. Align the male side of the fan to the female side of another fan and daisy chain the crap out of them, creating a giant block of fans. One thing we will also... Yes. One thing we will also get in the box is this 25 cm long extension cable. This can be used to daisy chain two blocks of cables which are physically separate from each other. For example, a triple block of fans in the front and then a triple block in the top because the new controller can from now on control up to six fans in a single group. Or you can just run two separate cables, one for each block, or use the extension or Use whatever you want, it's, it's really up to you. Or you can create what I created here. A dual block with an extension so that I can move the fan during the review. But one thing to note here is that you can only connect the extension after removing that hook on the female connection side of the fan, because it, it's just in the way. Though you will want to remove these from the last fan anyway, because on a radiator they may hinder installing them at all, because of them hitting the fittings, or in a case it will just look weird. So you will, you know, have it, them dangling down and you don't want that. So it doesn't really matter. At this point, you might also have spotted a few other changes Lee and Lee made going from V1 to V2, like for example, this metal bracket on the side. Now, it's slightly thinner around the central part, and it got RGB, yes, yes, even more RGB. Completely lit, we got RGB coming out in the central hub, illuminating the seven slightly bent, but uh, very thick milky acrylic wings, and then we got four rounded lines at each of the fan's corners, on both sides. Then we got the ARGB ring in the back of the fan, and now we also get a total of eight very thin RGB lines going around that metal looking part. So if you are one of these RGB addicts, this will definitely give you a fix. Other than the changes on the connection, a bit more RGB and the new L3 controller and a bit of spec sheet improvements, Li and Li still kept all the things that made their fan worth it. It is still sturdy as hell, it, it doesn't bend, good luck bending that, you, you could throw it. We still got the massive rubber around the screw holes, the fan frame is still 28mm thick, making the whole thing as strong as it is. We still got that beautiful aluminum badge in the center on both sides. It still performs very very good. Sure, we have a golden sample problem here compared to the Infinities, but on the grand scheme it performs good for a case fan and exceptionally good for a radiator fan. One of, or the best, we don't know yet, I, don't, I didn't test every fan, but compared to a Nokia NFA12, they are better, which is already something. And we still got the whole daisy chain system, making it easy and cable less to install more and more fans as you go. And let's not forget, I had another opportunity to use Li and Li's L3 software for all of the benchmark and the, the RGB tests and all, and I still stand by my opinion that it is the least annoying proprietary software I have used so far. As far as improvements over V1 go, I have no clue. I don't have them, and I never did, and I probably never will now where V2 is out, so I can't really speak on, on anything related to that, but as a standalone product, they are great. Case performance is good, radiator performance is amazing, build quality, RGB implementation, installation mechanic, all of it is amazingly well made. So, should you get it or not? As far as my benchmarks go, as of now, it seems like the Uni Infinity fans are still the best case performers, but for radiators, if you are into, you know, water cooling, yes, definitely yes. And of course, if you are into the whole RGB thing, and as far as RGB goes, the implementation on how you can control each individual part of, of this fan is still unbeaten out there. Li and Li just dominates that part. But you need to be into the whole RGB thing. If an all black stealth is the thing for you, then yeah, get a different set of fans. Or you can just spray paint them. I, I heard that works too. But okay, this should be it for Li and Li and their brand new AL120 V2 refresh. At this point, a huge thank you to Li and Li for sending them over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership. So if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to get another round of anti-RGB treatment. I keep doing those 
coming back clean and then here comes Lee and Lee with another fan. It's it's exhausting. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the SL Infinity fans. Still the best case fans so far. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.